welcome to Movie Review Mom. I'm the mom and I do the movie reviews. And my goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision for you and your family as to whether or not you want to spend time or money or both watching a particular film. So the particular film I'm reviewing today is called Blonde. This biography of sorts, I guess I can call it a fictional biography, was recently released on Netflix on September 28th, 2022. It is rated NC 17. And I've got a bunch of tips for parents because this is a solid rated R film. Now it's not rated R because it didn't go to movie theaters, but to Netflix, despite Netflix's requests to remove all of the sexual content, there is plenty of it earning the movie an NC-17 rating. The director was shocked by the rating, thinking he had colored inside the lines. Seriously? That's one of the problems with Hollywood today. I think they have no idea where the lines are. I will talk more about that in just a minute. The movie is two hours and 46 minutes long. That is a really long movie, and I'll talk about that too. My overall movie review mom grade is, ready? Drum roll. C minus, wah, wah. let me explain why. I'll give you an overview in a nutshell and then I'll point out things I liked and didn't like about the movie as well as offer strong tips for parents, themes worth talking about and some recommendations for some other films that I think that you'll like better than this one. All right, so in a nutshell from director Andrew Dominic and based on the best-selling novel by Joyce Carol Oates, Blonde boldly reimagines the life of one of Hollywood's most enduring icons, Marilyn Monroe. From her volatile childhood as Norma Jean, through her rise to stardom and romantic entanglements, Blonde blurs the lines of fact and fiction to explore the widening split between her public and private selves. So here are some of the things that I really liked about the movie. First of all, Ana de Armas gives the performance of her life in this biopic of sorts of Marilyn Monroe. With dental prosthetics and blue contact lenses, she really does look like the famous blonde bombshell. Every now and then her Cuban accent pops out despite many months of dedicated voice training to make her sound American. And about all of the nudity in the film, she said she can't control it if it gets out onto the internet. Oops, oh well, that kind of sounds like a Marilyn Monroe thing. Surely she'll be nominated for an Oscar because Hollywood loves to award biopic actors and films. The beautiful little actress who played Norma Jean as a child did a really great job. Her name is Lily Fisher. I hadn't seen her in anything before, even though she's been very busy in her young years. So I look forward to seeing more of her. Yeah, throughout the film, there are interesting camera angles and techniques, especially in act one. And I liked that imagery of the filmmaking industry itself. They begin to disappear a little bit after that. And then it gets a little bit messy and not as clear of a direction in the camera department, I guess you could say. Some of the things that I didn't like are that the movie really focuses on the bad, ugly, and the misery of her life. The result is a very depressing film. The side characters aren't given much time or exploration. I thought it would be a more straightforward biopic. Of course, I thought it was actually going to be a true story. I hadn't seen the trailer or read anything about it. And oftentimes I don't on purpose because I don't want to be persuaded. And in this case, it was because I just didn't have time. And so as things were happening in the film, I was like, wait a minute, did that really happen? <laughs> this is really more of a psychological study based on fiction. And my question is why would someone do that when her real life was so fascinating and would have been an interesting bio picture, right? Ultimately, you feel sad during the majority of the movie and frustrated that you're watching a fabricated set of details of a real person's life. The bloated film clocks in at almost three hours, surely evidence that the team expects this to be an Oscar contender. The last hour dragged and I could not wait for the movie to end. So that's not good. It's creepy how Marilyn Monroe, at least in this telling, calls all of her husband's daddy. She definitely had daddy issues, at least according to this movie. And so 
after watching this film, doesn't it seem like those who reach the heights of fame and fortune often have turbulent personal lives with devastating endings? Of course, those are the biopics that get the Oscar contenders, right? So here's a question for you. Would you rather have a simple long life or an incredible but short one? Comment down below, because I think that's an intriguing question. The movie is very uncomfortable to watch because of the excessive, unnecessary nude and sex scenes. The line was crossed many times and turned the movie from being an interesting telling of the life of Marilyn Monroe to porn, in my opinion, not that I watch porn, but it's what it felt like. And I just felt dirty after watching it. Another thing I find interesting and ironic is that the movie focused so much on how poor Marilyn was exploited, and yet that's the very same thing that the movie does to Marilyn. Crazy, right? Let me give you some tips for parents. This is not appropriate for children and definitely not family friendly. We see full frontal nudity of one woman and other topless women, and we see Ana de Armas topless many, many times doing many things we don't want our children to see. We see, for example, a menage a trois sexual encounter with a surprising amount of detail. We see other things she does to guys in detail that we did not need to see to understand that, you know, that was a part of her life. It's just not necessary. So some of the themes that were illustrated well are sexual abuse, exploitation, orphans, love and acceptance, loneliness, daddy issues, celebrity, and identity. And one of the elements or themes of the movie that I thought was actually really intriguing was that she had two separate identities, that more innocent Norma Jean, the young girl growing up, and this total sex bomb, Marilyn Monroe, who was performing for the world. And I thought that that just idea of personas, the facades or the different faces that we wear is an interesting topic and one worth talking about. All right, so I always write down funny lines and interesting lines, and I do so to give you a taste of what the movie's kind of like, how the script feels. I definitely didn't write down any funny lines. It's not a comedy at all, but I will share a couple of interesting lines for you. For example, Gladys, who's played by Julia Nicholson, says, in California, you can't tell what's real and what's just yourself. And I thought that that was funny because that was early Hollywood days. And then Norma Jean says, isn't all love based on delusion? And I thought how sad of a statement or question that is, that's coming from someone who never felt true love, unconditional love. And that shows you where her mindset was the whole time. And then finally, Adrian Brody, who plays Arthur Miller says, darling, where do you go when you disappear? And she does often, and those are flashbacks as she's thinking about her childhood, how she'd been abandoned or not loved and discarded and all of those things really colored the way she saw the world. And ultimately that's kind of the message of the movie. All right, before we go, let me give you a recommendation for three biopics that I think that you should watch. The first one is the most recent one, which is Elvis. Uh, critics were just falling all over themselves with how excited they were about the movie. I thought it was okay, it was good, but it didn't blow me away. So comment down below and let me know what you thought. Another somewhat recent one is Judy with the amazing Renee Zellweger. And I thought that she did an excellent job. And however, probably my favorite biopic in recent years is Bohemian Rhapsody, which actually won Rami Malek an Academy Award for his performance as Freddie Mercury. So if you haven't seen that biopic, definitely check that one out. All right, that's it for my review. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me and for supporting my growing channel. Tell all your friends to come subscribe and to check out my movie reviews. And while you're at it, go over to Instagram and follow me there. You can follow me as Movie Review Mom or as Trina Voice, which is my real name. <laughs> and you can learn about the books that I write, um, the podcasts that I have, online courses, and all my other silly nonsense. Thanks so much. Have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.